When you arrive, you'll see this Tupperware container on top of the shaker. The three net wells that we'll be using are located inside. In order to do rinses and prep for storage, you will need to grab the containers for 1x PBS and another container for 1x PBS with azide from the fridge door, pictured here. Slow the shaker speed until it has stopped and carefully remove the Tupperware lid, making sure to keeping it level and avoiding any shaking. Remove each of the three net wells carefully, keeping them level as well. On the counter, there are two tubes that the primary antibody solutions are normally stored in. Primary antibody solutions can be salvaged and reused, and they are also a somewhat expensive reagent. So, grab first this tube that says combined primary, and this other tube that says mouse anti-CFOS 1 to 500. Did you notice the colors of the netwell handles in these pictures? The red and blue handled netwells have solution in them that will, you will pour into that bigger combined primary tube. And the black handled netwell has solution that you will pour into the smaller CFOS 1 to 500 tube. To prep for returning the solutions to their respective home tubes, I recommend propping them up in this pink holder depicted here. Take the libs of the tubes off. Now, for each of the net wells, separate the netted insert wheel from the clear basin as shown here. Place the netted insert on the counter, not on a paper towel. We do not want to dry these netted inserts out. Pour the solution of these basins into their appropriate tubes. Again, the red and blue netwell basins get poured into the bigger combined primary tube, and the black handled netwells basin gets poured into the smaller CFOS 1 to 500 tube. If you do happen to accidentally mix the solutions, I'd rather that you discard them than try to figure out how they were mixed. But assuming you have poured the solutions into the correct tubes, put the caps back on those tubes and place the tubes in the fridge door as shown here. To prep for rinsing, we'll want to move some 1x PBS solution from that large jug from the fridge into a smaller container. In the pink holster shown here, there should be a PBS measuring tube. Fill this tube up with that 1x PPS solution from the jug, being careful not to spill. A tip, if this tube runs out of PBS solution when doing rinses later, just refill it from the jug. On a side note, I may have had clear plastic circular lids on the netwells. If there are lids on the netwells, here's a depiction of how to remove one such lid. Once removed, you can put it aside on the counter. Do this for any net wells that have lids. Grab a waste container in order to have somewhere to drain off your IHC waste. To start a rinse, pour the 1x PBS solution from the PBS measuring tube into each net wells basin. The amount to add should be around 9 milliliters. Adding too little will result in the sections not stirring on the shaker, whereas adding too much will also keep the sections from stirring and usually cause some spillage. If you happen to overfill a basin, just pour off the excess into your waste beaker. Once you have PPS in a basin, lower the net well insert in at an angle to prevent air bubble formation. Do this for all three net wells. It is okay if you happen to swap an insert with a different basin as they are all receiving the same 1x PBS solution at the same time. Once all three net wells have PBS solution and the inserts put back in, move them back to the Tupperware container that's on top of the shaker as shown here. Set the shaker speed dial to just fast enough so that you can see the sections moving slightly. It is best if the sections move slowly. If the shaker is set too high a speed, the solution may actually spill out of the basin or the sections may get stuck along the edges and become damaged. The shaker does make a loud clunking sound like you hear here. Don't mind that too much. 
After five minutes of having these net wells on the shaker, a single rinse is now finished. Remove all the net wells from the shaker, take the net well inserts out of their basins, put those inserts on the counter and not on a paper towel, and pour the contents of all three basins into the waste beaker. We still have two more rinses to do, however. Pour new 1x PBS solution into all three basins, reinsert the net well inserts, place them all back on the shaker, and turn the speed to slow. Or, for convenience, you can just keep the shaker going at slow speed the whole time in this process and not bother changing the speed dial. Wait five minutes, then remove the net wells, take out the inserts, and discard the solution in the basins. Now, Repeat this whole process once more. After you finish the three PBS rinses, rinsing is now complete. We will now prepare the net wells for wet storage in the fridge. Grab the 250 milliliter bottle labeled PBS with 0.05% azide. As a reminder, the bottle's location is in the top shelf of the fridge door if you didn't take it out earlier. Pour this PBS with azide solution directly from the bottle into each of the three basins. Reinsert all the net well inserts. Then grab this long container that will be used for storing the net wells. Place the net wells in this storage container. To maintain moisture in the net well storage container, dampen a paper towel with the distilled water squirt bottle that's located on the lab counter. Our paper towels are kept on the shelf. There should be a few above where the shaker is located. Fold the paper towel and place it in the container next to the net wells. I recommend adding these thin plastic lids to the net wells. This first one, from appearance, seems to be a bit too snug and needs some pressure to apply it on. The next one is not as snug, but still good. The third one is a bit loose, but should be fine for what we need. In any case, you want to try to add these lids regardless of how snug or loose they are. In case the lids did not come with the net wells when you first arrived, though, you can find them in this blue box on the left pictured here. Now, add the storage container lid on, and then press it on to seal it. Then carefully remove this storage container to an even surface in the fridge, making sure not to tilt the container while you are transporting it. It is prohibited to leave open containers of solution out on the lab counter if they are not in use. So before leaving for the day, discard the contents of your waste beaker into the appropriate sealed waste container. I suggest you use a funnel to prevent spillage. Be sure to screw on the cap for this waste container. Leaving this container open could also cause the lab to get a safety violation citation. Lastly, be sure to return the 1x PBS jug and the 1x PBS with 0.05% azide bottle both back to the fridge door locations as shown here. Clean up any remaining items you left out on the counter. Wipe down any spilled solutions on the counter with paper towels and discard those paper towels in the trash. Ensure that the shaker is off by setting the speed dial to zero. This just requires turning it counterclockwise until it stops. You should be done now. Congrats!